Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm George. This is Malacca Motorsports. Um, we haven't put a video up in about 10 days. You've seen a lot of teasing and a lot of things happening on Instagram, uh, <laughs> what we're alluding to. Uh, I have the subframe system on top of the work table now uh, for the B5 that I'm tearing apart. But now I have the RS3 in the garage. Um, I'm pulling the motor, I'm yanking all the accessories, all the goodies you see there, pulling off the front end. I don't have a lift. Uh, <laughs> I have a three car garage that has decent size. What I'm gonna be doing is putting this bad boy on jacks. We're gonna be disconnecting the drive shaft. We're gonna be disconnecting the axles, taking off all the electronics, and then disconnect the engine mount and literally pulling it out the front. So here we go. Parting out my RS3. Um, and in this episode, we're gonna feature just removing everything as the stock motor hasn't arrived yet. Um, so we're going to be removing the built motor, taking a look at the turbo kit, talking about it for a little bit. We're going to take a look at some of the parts. I got to clean them up and take some pictures and list them for sale. Um, and then again, we'll talk about the, the next step, the, the next, the next step more or less. I'll kind of hint at that as I don't want to give away too much. Anyway, let's get to work. Cause I got a lot to do. Uh, stuff should be coming over here in the next couple hours. Uh, and then he can help too, pull in this bad boy out as I've never pulled the motor on the RS3. We've always been kind of hesitant to work on it, but that stops today. Um, every car that we're gonna get, we're gonna be pretty much wrenching on 100% here. So let's yank this bad boy. So I'm just getting the front of the car on jacks. I don't have a lift. I probably should invest in those quick jacks. I don't know, kind of, kind of weird out on those, but I'm just using jack stands, getting the front of the car up, taking the wheels off getting the front bumper off. I'm gonna be removing the intercooler, a lot of the parts on top, the intake, the DSG engine catch can. Um, I wanna drain the fluids in the car to make sure it's dry so I'm not dripping fluids all over the place as I'm pulling the engine out, putting it on top of my work table. But uh, I, I try to be as careful as possible. I'm not known for having patience. I'm known for like ripping engines out with harnesses attached to them. So being that the car is very, very new and very expensive, I'm trying to be as careful as I can as the intention is to put a stock motor back in the car after the built motor's out. Um, but again, little tidbits coming off really easily, um, not having really too much of an issue with them. Stav was going to come over and help me with the drive shaft and removing the axles. He ended up coming over. Uh, you'll see here shortly in the video, um, but he had to dip out. So I ended up pulling the drive shaft myself, which wasn't too bad. Uh, ended up using a small box on the edge of it to hold it up. As long as you don't let that drive shaft come apart, you're good to go. Um, so take that out, took the axles out, um, and pretty much was ready to shimmy this motor out. So I'm using my Harbor Freight little, um, engine hoist along with the little leveler and slowly but surely I was able to nudge this without damaging anything, uh, coming out. I had to be careful of that, uh, AC line that I had to kind of like bend out of the way, but after the engine was out and didn't cause any damage to the line, luckily the, the rubber part's the only thing that I kind of moved out of the way. But slowly but surely, kind of just nudged it. The downpipe in the back was an issue against the heat shield, but managed to slowly just you know wiggle it out and get it on top of my work table. So let's go over the engine real quick. We'll talk about it for a few minutes and then we'll get into the details of why I'm doing this and what's the path forward. The motor is out on our work table. I told you, look at this. Look how massive this motor and transmission and then the transfer case is. And this table takes it without bending without flexing, takes it like a champ. Ooh, there's that blue inlet. We're gonna have to kind of paint this over and strip it just like we did that black intake manifold they came in. Uh, woo, this thing is heavy. Let me tell you, it's no slouch. And it's not bad. I ended up getting the drive shaft out in one piece by myself. Stav ended up coming helping for a little bit, but then he had to go. And then I pulled this motor by myself. Uh, it was a little bit of the pain, Getting it pretty much out of the bay. Uh, you have to be careful you're not hitting the frame or hitting the heat shields. These pretty much, these things just kind of dangle. Um, in most shops, if they have a lift, they usually just drop the motor from, from below. So taking the motor from the front, it's most shops I'd say won't do it if they have a lift. Uh, but I don't have a lift and I'm here at home on jack stands. So I'd say this was about a four or five hour job, maybe going on six counting, yeah, I'd say about six. Never doing this before, being real careful, not ripping any of the wires, unplugging everything. Uh, trying to save as much as I can as I'm removing bolts, labeling them. Yeah, about six, six and a half hours for me. First time pulling this motor. 
Uh, I do want to pull that dog bone mount as 034's inserts in there. We've been having it in there for about almost two years. A lot of people complain that they bend. That should be the updated inserts that's in there, the upper and lower. We're going to pull that out here in just a second. I'm going to showcase it and we'll see what it looks like so we can kind of get an idea of, you know what? I'm going to pull it out right now. Give me a second. All right, so I just yanked these out. They're still dirty, I didn't clean them up. Uh, the upper insert, the only damage that it has is the marks that I did to hammer it out of the top, uh, but no bend marks. Looks, ooh, it looks actually kind of bent. So you kind of see it over there. So two years, about 900 horsepower uh, insert on a stock mount. Oof. Okay, so the upper insert is definitely doing work, but it's still bending a little bit. This is the lower insert that initially came out and it had a little bit thinner on the leg, so these would bend super easy, like they'd be almost shut. And now this, see it's slightly, slightly bent in, but this side's a little bit more, more pronounced as it's bending in. So does, does the upper insert help? For those of you guys that want to stay stock, sure. Stock, transmission, the little subframe bushing, this will definitely help. Um, but is it the end all be all? No. I definitely will go with 034 is complete bushing. There's other companies that make the bushing replacement too. I haven't tried those. I haven't even tried 034s, but I did these inserts and they did a hell of a job for the last two years with all the power and drag racing and everything that we've done. So just slightly bent, slightly bent, but still usable. At least I think so. Maybe I'll hit up 034 and get these replaced. Ooh, so next person can be really happy. Dog bone mount, uh, the actual, like, uh, this pendulum is actually pretty straight. It's beefy, it's all billet. Uh, it's just dirty, again. Uh, but no bends, no nothing. 034 Motorsport. Not bad, guys, good job. Good job for inserts on a squishy ass little stock mount. So, again, that's two years. Don't be looking at my Mio drink, that's water and Mio. Uh, two years of beating on it. Not bad, guys, not bad at all. That's it. That is the part out. Waiting on the stock motor that I purchased from Canada. Should be coming in, then we'll slap it into the RS3, get it cleaned up. Uh, that's it, guys. It's uh, bittersweet. Moving on to the next stage, parting out what's currently on the car. But again, reiterating, this is a good thing. Whatever, you, whatever you're gonna see now on this channel is gonna be more, more us as opposed to us going somewhere and saying, look what this shop installed. So cool that they installed it. And we've been doing that for a lot. Most of the stuff that we do in the RS3 for the last two years. So we wanna change it up. Uh, I do notice that a lot of YouTubers out there, again, not throwing shade at anybody, but a lot of them will just go to some place, promote them and say, hey, look, look, look what these guys can do and get it done and go enjoy their car. The journey of building and breaking has been probably the most rewarding, especially with the B5 stuff, learning the things that we've learned in the last few years, doing this car stuff has been amazing. And I think we missed out on that. I think there was value added that we missed out on uh, letting another shop pretty much handle the RS3. Now we've developed some parts. We made the throttle body inlet, intercooler piping kits. We did some things, we dabbled a little bit, but we, we didn't get into the, to the meat and potatoes of the RS3 in terms of actually deciding what the engine compression, the build would be, whether it was gonna be for nitrous or not for nitrous. I essentially got pushed into a build that requires to run nitrous and I don't wanna run it because it's such a risk. So many people have damaged these five cylinder engines running nitrous, lifted heads, um, blown up intake manifolds, some crazy stuff. And it's a really expensive motor. Right now it still goes anywhere between 13 and $16,000 for a long block not even with all the accessories. You might get lucky and find one for 13 to 16 if you get one out of a crashed car, but this, that's still really expensive. Um, so moving on, whatever you see on this channel is gonna be more us and I'm beyond excited for the next step and I'm not gonna hint at it too much in this video. You may some, see some things in this video, some things in the background, some Easter eggs uh, that may lead you to what's next. Um, and if you spot it, put it in the comments. If you don't, uh, it's okay. In the next couple videos coming, I don't want to say anything in this video till I have something to show you. So, uh, yeah. Next video, when we talk about the next step, and you'll know, because it'll, it'll have the title Silver Piggy in it, because it's also a Silver Piggy, uh, you'll know what the actual update and what our path forward is. Uh, we're still working on the B5's rear subframe. We're going to be working on that. That's not stopping. 
Uh, stuff still waiting on the turbo. Uh, 2020 has hit a lot of companies really hard, so there's a lot of back orders and things like that. So he bought this massive like 1100 Zona Snail that's supposed to be coming in. I'm really excited for him to throw it on the car and you know tune in his nitrous and tune in with the new turbo and kind of see where he could take his 12 valve. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see what he makes on an actual dyno and then actually get the car performing and moving you know as we build up his drive line and get that kind of sorted. As you guys saw we posted up a video not too long ago on the B6 rear diff. That's still in the work um, but this stuff takes time as we're doing it pretty much here on our own. Um, and that's kind of like the hint, that's the, the, the gist of what I'm trying to hint is that moving forward, whether it be new, old, it's going to be right here in this shop. Uh, us building motors, us assembling, us installing. And I think that's the way we like it. Regardless, it's going to require more work. Um, but I think in the end, looking back, me and Stav will enjoy it. Uh, looking back on the journey of us learning and having fun and breaking stuff. And I don't know, it's whatever. Stav's my brother, so we love doing this stuff you know, together in terms of on the car. So, you know, going someplace and having another shop do stuff on a car, it's, it takes a lot away from that. Anyway, moving forward, uh, Hoonigan has an episode coming out today as well. Uh, we raced about a couple months ago for an episode uh, for their series. You got to check it out. I uh, wasn't allowed to say anything about it before, wasn't really allowed to hint anything about it, but they are releasing this episode. There's a couple episodes we filmed with them, and it's going to be primarily on their channel. It's their episodes, their filming crew. Uh, we were just invited guests, which we're going to be back on their channel soon with the new setup, with this new kind of new thing that we got going. So again, more updates to come later on, but definitely check out Hoonigan if you haven't. You probably already you know subscribed to them, but just check out their new episode today, and you'll see the Silver Piggy. Have some fun. And you'll see us kind of uh, uh, do whatever over there and have a good time and, and race. Uh, aside from that, the opportunity was amazing. Thank you again, Hoonigan, Brian, the rest of his team and family there were amazing, very hospitable. Uh, down to earth. The, the group of people there that was so down to earth was just absolutely amazing. And after we were done filming, we were pretty much done. We were supposed to leave. They let us kind of just hang out. We hung out. We kind of like hid in one of the Hoonigan like trailers and watched. And it was really cool to see a really large uh, YouTube network or YouTube conglomerate kind of film and see how all the little pieces come together. That was really humbling and learned a lot. Definitely goals and aspirations to hopefully one day maybe, maybe get there. That again, goals, 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 goals. Check out Hoonigan if you haven't already. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed these updates, and we'll see you again on the next episode. I'm George. This is Malaka Motorsports. I'll see you later, guys.